HTMX is the opposite of React and other JavaScript frameworks. What do I mean by that? We'll be covering what HTMX is, when it's useful, what its limits are, and more. First, what is HTMX? HTMX was created by a guy called Carson Gross, and it stands for HTML extension, as he explains on the website. The extension of HTML happens on two levels. The most obvious one you see in the code. HTMX extends the HTML attributes. For example, in this code where we define the on-click behavior. However, it must be said that that example is in fact an exception. Most of the HTMX extensions are focusing on communicating with the server and dealing with the response. For example, let's take a look at the following code. Here we can see that we have three attributes on the button. First, we have the hx-get, which describes the ajax call that will be made to the server, namely the get call to the slash info route. When the response is received, htmx will then find the element in the DOM that is designated by the hx-select. That is to say, the element with the info details ID. Then, because hx-swap is set to outer HTML, HTMX will then swap out the entire selected element with the HTML that is received from the server. And that brings me to the second extension. In the React world, we use the HTML page as basically just the thing that hosts the application. But here, HTML is much more than that. HTMX supposes that the server will respond with HTML. HTML is also the message and the state holder. Like me, you might find it weird to imagine an API that responds in hypertext rather than, say, JSON. The HTMX website points to a blog post by Roy Fielding, who happens to be the guy who came up with the idea of REST. That post is entitled, REST APIs must be hypertext driven. That title probably gives you a good idea of where he stands on this whole HTML as a response issue. And I kind of see the point. Remember that REST means representational state transfer. And JSON is excellent at serializing data in a human-friendly way. But you expect that data to follow a fixed shape. This means the JSON won't change shape based on the state. Carson uses the example of a bank account interface where the draw money action would be disabled based on how much money is in the account. Of course, you and I can easily imagine how we could wrangle the JSON to include that information. But my default reflex would be rather to set up some logic in the interface on the client side to adapt to the data. And that's fine to my mind. However, it isn't the path that HTMX has taken. HTMX doesn't expect any client-side logic to update the interface state based on the server response. In fact, HTMX shies away from that responsibility. It purposefully puts the responsibility of updating the display state squarely on the server's shoulders. This is why you could say that although it is a JavaScript library, HTMX is in fact an anti-JavaScript framework. A JavaScript framework essentially manages the state on the client, then updates the HTML display based on that state. HTMX relies almost exclusively on the server to update the state. And that naturally brings me to my next question. Why choose HTMX? Under what circumstance does it make sense to go with HTMX rather than a client-side framework? What is the point of communicating HTML responses rather than something like JSON? The beauty of HTMX is that by taking the HTML response road, it's able to provide a single page application like experience that is only driven by the server. Of course, you're probably aware that React on its side has started taking over server side responsibilities. Theo makes the point that React and Next.js and other frameworks have expanded the domain of front end developers. They've given front end development state management powers. That started client side with front-end frameworks, but now with Next.js and React server components leading the charge, that has started to include the server. And running on the server makes sense because that's where the permanent data lives. Now, the beauty of this approach is that you don't need to switch languages between the client and server sides. And switching languages requires even more mental gymnastics than switching contexts. So I'm all for keeping things unified, but server-side React keeps you firmly in the JavaScript and TypeScript world. 
But what if you're a back-end developer? Or what if you're wary of JavaScript's quirks and weirdness? Or what if you're just in a context where you're programming in PHP or Ruby or Python? The beauty of HTMX is it doesn't restrict your choices. It jokingly refers to itself as the HAL stack, H-O-W-L, where HAL stands for hypertext on whatever you'd like. That means that you can render that HTML content and provide a single page application experience with whatever server-side language you're a fan of without locking yourself into the JavaScript world. This means that HTMX is doing the polar opposite of what React does. And it's another reason why I'd say HTMX is an anti-JavaScript framework. HTMX extends the domain of back-end developers into front-end territory. And so to me, the fundamental question of who might profit from learning and using HTMX comes down to two things. First, where should your state live and how much do you trust your users? Web applications live on a spectrum ranging from banks on one end to arcade games on the other. An arcade game state is complex, it needs to change quickly and it has no real world implications. So it lives on the client. For applications with client-side state and client-side logic, it makes sense to use a client-side framework. Conversely, on the other side of the spectrum, banks don't trust their users. So all the state and all the logic lives on the server. And if you're in that situation, you might be better off using HTMX rather than a front-end framework. Or to frame things differently, the question is also, what kind of developer do you view yourself as? Are you a front-end JavaScript developer who's server-side curious? Well, in that case, you're probably better served understanding how Next.js and React server components work. And I have videos to help you out with that. Or are you a server-side developer who doesn't care for JavaScript? Well, in that case, HTMX might actually be a good fit for you. Although it does require that your client-side facing APIs speak HTML. In my experience, that isn't usually the case. If your API is already set up, moving to HTML might be a big ask. But whatever path you choose, I'll see you in the next video.